Hello, I'm Philip Pilkington. I'm a photographer. Uh, welcome to my channel. Um, I'm going to be talking about some work that I've done at home, just to show you guys what it can be done at home. This is uh, using oil and water, and I'll show you the, the setup. And at the end of the video, I'm going to talk about some extra tips to make it even better than what I show you at the moment on this video. Um, but yeah, so make sure you watch all the way to the end of the video. I'm also going to include um, some retouching that I did to the image. Now, it does take a bit of time to show you, and I, I, I speeded through it as well. But, um, you know, if you're not interested in the retouch, you can just skip that bit of the video. But uh, you know, the tips, the extra tips I've got are at the end of the video. So make sure you watch till the end. This video is done on um, the GoPro Hero 8. So that's a bit of an experiment for me because I've never done any vlogging with that before. Uh, I'll just show you a quick setup now. I'll talk more about it later in the video. So what we can see is we've um, got a tripod that has this sort of arm that comes out. It's, it's a Manfrotto tripod, it's a 190 it's a X Pro 4, um, but it has the ability to pull this, the, this bar can come out and go horizontal. So because for this setup you need the camera pointing vertically down, so that's good for that. I've also I've put, put that on the end, which is um, some Manfrotto Magic Arm that's just as a, acting as a counterweight. Um, but I've also got one of these sort of aperture. What do call? I, think it's, uh, I can't remember what they're called now. It's an aperture light. Um, so it's good, it's small. So that aperture light is going to go under there when it's switched on. I've got these coloured gels which are going to go over it. And then all you need to do is add some, add some oil to the water and get some sort of quite nice abstract bubble shots out of it. Um, so I'll just show you how I set this up better and uh, yeah, we'll go from there. So, yeah, once you've got your setup right, try and find the best exposure. Then when you've got your exposure sorted, it's time to pour in some oil. So I've been using, I've been using olive oil, uh, but it's, it's pretty simple really. Uh, it's all about getting the right lighting though, that you want the lighting to come from underneath. Because uh, I've seen other people do this, I've seen it where they, they separate the, the water 
from the background by quite a lot in order to say use um, use like studio flashes to light up the the bottom like a piece of paper at the bottom I don't think that's the best way because not only are you lighting up the, the colored paper you, you're also lighting up the bubbles themselves you really want it to be backlit so you need to separate the uh, the back light from the oil so that back that backlit look is going to help you get a better look of your bubbles um, but uh, this is the setup I've done some photos and a bit of video so I'll show you them both now but uh, it's really good just to have a play around with this because even my setup is not not the best but this is just an example of what you can do quickly at home uh, but yeah here's some examples to show you Okay, so what I'm doing is um, I'm just going to go through all the images that I took on the day. So you'll see some that are underexposed, some are overexposed, some are correct exposure. But this is me just playing around with the exposure just to see what is going to be working best. Um, but I was also just changing the aperture, so most of the time I'm shooting on like f5, um, but I do experiment with going up to f8. But the problem with that is, is because I'm using an LED light, you do start to see some of the individual LED bulbs. So I probably, if you use an LED light, I wouldn't go on to a aperture such as f8. Um, keep it around f5, or you can go shallower than that. But sometimes, if you're not perfectly level on with the bubbles, the top of it can be in focus, and the bottom of it will be out of focus. So, yeah, you have to just be careful with what, what app you're using. F5 seems to work for me, uh, and I'm using uh, it's a 100mm macro lens, let's say uh, Tokina. Uh, it's, actually, it's, not a, it's a pretty good lens, to be fair, uh, and it's not, not very expensive. But they've, they've just replaced it recently, uh, so the new ones, so you have to look out for the older ones, if you want uh, the same one that I've got anyway. But uh, also, most of these images have had a very small crop, but this main one that keeps coming up uh, is the, the yellow and the brown and the orange one. That one has been cropped by maybe over 50%. Um, but there's, there's lots of potential to crop it even more to get you know, even more interesting results. And this is me showing the retouching now. So the first step is just to get rid of all the little blemishes and I did clean out my tank before uh, starting this photography but when you zoom in this close it is to be expected to find little bits of debris just in it, just because it's a normal container that at one point had a little bit of dust in it uh, so this this image is at about uh, this is like full frames so this this has not been cropped like at all but you can see you could probably get about 10 different versions out of one shot here because I'm zoomed in now and I'm just going round. Lots of potential there. So you can see that there's a little hair on the edge of a bubble. So you can't just clone it out because you want to keep the radius of the bubble. So I've used a, a tool to go around it and uh, created a new section in Photoshop on a new layer. It's just the, yeah, I've matched the colour that I need and there's a slight graduation to it as well. So I've graduated that, that area and I've blended it in using the layer mask and uh, a graduation on the layer mask just to make sure it blends in nicely. So I mean, I'm really happy with it. I'm going to just try changing the colours just a little bit. I think I'll just try going to extremes first to see what results I get. But in the end, I think I'm just going to change it just a little bit. It's uh, yeah, adjusting the levels slightly, but this it's really good results. I really like the sort of results that you get out of this. Yeah, one thing that I noticed is the 
the smoothness of the graduation of the colours isn't as smooth as I want it to be. And to be fair, I'm not really sure why it's not so smooth. But it is fairly easy to make it smoother. I've just blurred another layer. And then I'm masking out to make sure that I keep all the edges that are sharp. Because I don't want the edges to be blurred. It's just the centre of these bubbles that I'm blurring now. Yeah, I think it's just going to help the overall look. Just the transition of colours look better. Right guys, so I know you've seen my setup, but I wanted to talk to you about what equipment you actually need to be able to do this. So I've mentioned that the my tripod has the extra column that can come out so that you can put the camera vertically down. Now that, that does help, you don't actually need it. If you can figure out another way of, of mounting the camera or using a normal tripod, you can use a normal tripod for this. Um, it's just easier, it's easier if the, if the camera can extend and then point it downwards. Um, so one of the things that is an absolute must is, is a macro lens. Because uh, these bubbles, are, the, the oil droplets are very small. So if you're, not, if you're not able to focus when you're very close up to them, it's, it's not going to look as good. Um, unless, maybe, if you've got a very big tank, a very big light source underneath, then you wouldn't need to go as close but you would end up a very different shot because you would see how small the droplets of oil are uh, so you'd have many many droplets of oil in one shot which i have seen other people do and it does look good but um, i think for these results that we're getting now this this is the best way to get good results without going over the top with a big i mean a big tank it's going to be hard to get hold of and a big light source underneath is also hard to get hold of but even if you have got a macro lens, it is better to find bigger tanks and bigger light sources for better results. Um, but you saw my example, it's small and it did a good job. Uh, the other thing that you're going to want to consider is like the colours that you use. So um, you, I've chosen two colours that are very different and it worked well. Um, now what you can do is you can choose two colours that are similar, just a slight tonal change, which does work well. Um, but yeah, just think about the colours before you do your shoot. Um, and I think you should aim for at least two colours. Alright, yeah, so you've seen everything about this type of shoot now. And you know, I think that the results are really, really good. I'm, I'm so happy with them. You know, I'm really about sort of you know, the minimal, abstract sort of nature of these images and, and the colours and the way the tones change. It just makes for really good sort of like fine art images almost that you can put on the wall. Um, but you guys can go and experiment for yourself. And when you do experiment, I would like to see results. So if you can send me a link and put them on the, the comments of the video. But uh, yeah, I hope you liked the video. So please check out you know, my other sites, my other uh, Instagram, um, and my Facebook profiles, and my own website. So my name is you know, Philip Pilkington. If you just type in that uh, into Google, Instagram, Facebook, you'll, you'll find me. But uh, yeah, I hope this has been helpful. You know, subscribe and like and comment and... All those good things. Uh, until the next video.